Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 15 of the Associated Wrestling Press's Second Caution, brought to you by WrestlingAddicts.com. I'm always telling people, why walk on water when you can dance on it? If you're going to deal with the best wrestling apparel company out there, it has to be WrestlingAddicts.com. They have the best designers. They have the best customer service. So if you're going to deal with somebody in the wrestling world for wrestling merchandise, make sure it's WrestlingAddicts.com. That's WrestlingAddix.com. For episode 15 of The Second Caution, I'll be your host, Eric Olanowski, ESPN and Big Ten Network Wrestling Analyst. And today we have ACC, two-time ACC champion, two-time NCAA All-American, NCAA finalist, Tyler Wilps. Welcome to the show, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. You've had one heck of a season, and I was following you throughout the season. I was hoping to see you wrestle Matt Brown when Penn State came to Pitt, and it was on ESPN3. We didn't end up seeing you wrestle, but uh, we'll get to that later on the show. Mm -hmm. So you win the ACC championship, become the outstanding wrestler, and I believe you were Pitt's first ever outstanding wrestler for the ACC. You're the first wrestler to win an ACC title from Pitt and as well as the uh, outstanding wrestler, so congratulations on that. Thank um, you. 15-3 and three heading into the NCAA tournament. How did you feel heading into the NCAA tournament? Uh, well, you know, I, I, felt, I felt good. You know, you, you have to be ready. I mean, it's it's one chance to uh, kind of kind of one one tournament that kind of defines your your you as a wrestler and and uh, you know like there's no choice but to be ready. So I felt good. I was I was like laser focused. Uh, you could see that probably in my ACC tournament, and uh, I felt the same in nationals. And you know, I just I just had confidence. You know, I know it was gonna be hard. I know there's a lot of good wrestlers, but I just was going in with some confidence and, and focus. So brackets come out you see the bracket. I always say the one thing I always try to stress to young wrestlers is it doesn't matter where you are in the bracket. The eight best wrestlers in the country going into the NCAA tournament, never all American. That's it's just how it plays out. Some people step up. Some people don't show up Mm -hmm. when you saw the draws. How did you feel about the draws? Um, well, I, I definitely thought that I, I definitely thought that I got under seated just like a lot of, a lot of other guys in the tournament but I mean that was just that was just something I thought for you know a second after that it's just okay well this is where I am I I want to be a national champion who do I have to beat to do it I don't have to beat every every single guy in the bracket I don't have to I don't have to beat 32 guys I have to beat you know uh four guys right and uh just saw my route and that was it so you get the eighth seed and you're on that top half. The eighth seed is in the top half with the number one seed. Yep. That number one seed was Nebraska's undefeated Kokish mm. coming in just absolute on a tear the entire season. People would have put him as a lock to win your weight class. You had different thoughts. But before we get to that, let's jump to your first two matches. Um, you win your first two matches, and the match with Kokesh is up next. So this is the spot you win in the quarters, you all American, right? And this is where you start to begin. Did at this point, did you ever were you ever thinking like your brother was a two time All American, correct? Yeah, he was. So were you ever thinking like I have to win this to get up there with my brother? <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that and uh, a <laughs> little in family conversation. But you know what? With that said, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I obviously would never root against my brother. I want him to be. I wish he was a national champ. You know, but. Yeah, I did. there was some of that that went through my mind. Like, okay. all right, there's these there's these expectations. I better I better do it. All right, it's a quick side story. Um, my brother wrestled at Mizzou, uh, Johnny, and I won this tournament twice that he never won, the Tiger Holiday Classic. It was in North Carolina. So I used to come home and put my brackets over, uh, over his bed <laughs> just to tick him off. So I, I end up losing the state finals, and he I came home the next day, and I had his state champ. He won the state title, and I oh had his yeah, state bracket over my bed. It was so I'll never That's forget that. Huh? Yeah, brutal. But um, okay. So, what was your thought process going into the Kokish match? You know he's number one. You know he's wrestling at a high level. 
he's undefeated. How, how are you looking at going into this match? Well, uh, I never saw I never saw Kogus is a great wrestler, definitely, but I never saw it that as a, as a bad matchup for me. I knew I matched up well with Kogus. I actually wrestled him the year before in uh, after the round of 12 the next match. So I won my round of 12 and then I wrestled him. And I lost to him and uh, you know, it was a couple of overtimes in the, in the ride out. And it was a really close match. It really could have gone either way. And I, I just knew it was going to be another tough match. And and then also the whole tournament, I've just been focusing on my competencies and my skills. I wasn't, like, getting caught up in my opponents, you know. And I made a little – some small tweaks. Like, I know, you know, Kokish has a really good um, dump. You know, he wants to just shoot in there low on your ankles and then try to catch an elbow and, and dump you. And he gets a lot of guy, good guys with that, and he's good at it. So I just, like, focus on a little things like that, but mostly – what am I good at? How am I going to push the pace? And, and, you know, and I was more focused on what I could do to win the match. Okay. So my next question was going to be, what did you and your coaches, what was the strategy that you put into place? So it was just basically stay away from the dumps. And then were you comfortable wrestling on top bottom with them? Yeah. Uh, actually bottom, bottom is one of my, is one of my best positions. And I mean, no, nobody in, nobody in the country, holds me down and and that's like that's something i'm not worried about as far as top goes you know i I would try to ride him he's you know it's not it's not my best position but as far as that goes i knew i was going to get that escape point and i knew it was going to come down to a takedown okay can you walk us through because i was calling the on matt one for espn3 i was next to you so where you were i was to the right and i'm on my headset and i'm trying to call the match that's going on on my mat and everyone's going crazy because he's losing and I have ne- I still haven't gotten an explanation or whatever ha- what happened at the end of the match that everyone was going nuts for well I don't I don't know because I got a I got a takedown in the, in the first period okay so he was I mean he was doing a lot to come back you know and I and I he was actually on my leg for a good bit of the match you know and I had some some pretty Insane. I do the I do that split D on the yeah. edge especially. Oh, yeah. So I was in that split for a good probably three <laughs> minutes at bat, and uh, that's probably what they're yelling about because the, the last uh, thirty seconds, you know, he was just pushing for that takedown. I was trying to stay in the center and wrestle and not give up that give up that stall point, you know. And uh, it was just like an exciting finish because he was going, you know, he's going for broke, and we're both we're both. Uh, you know, so far in the match and dead tired and wrestling hard. And it was just an exciting, good, you know, classic, like uh, NCAA match, man. Yeah. I tried to look for it. Um, Saturday, I tried to look for it on YouTube and they didn't have it, but, um, so that puts you in the semis, you lock up all American. Uh, so the semis, you, the way your black bracket played out, Johnny Eblen from Missouri, the three seed gets knocked off in the first round. You recently wrestled him, at the scuffle match was it yes. for third and fourth correct that's right yeah and he beat you for third and fourth and then mm-hmm. the fifth seed was blaze butler from uva who you beat twice this year that's right yeah i wrestled him twice beat so him once in the duel and then once in the acc championship so he gets knocked off by the 12 seed kyle crutchmer of oklahoma state so you're wrestling crutchmer mm-hmm. in the semifinals did you have an opportunity to to watch or see what Crutchman was doing at the NCAA championships during the tournament I didn't I didn't do that much but I, I actually wrestled Crutchmore at uh, the scuffle as okay well. yeah I wrestled I wrestled that uh the Missouri guy and uh and Crutchmore at the scuffle scuffle was I mean Crutchmore was um in the Conti semis, I wrestled him. Yeah, so I I knew I knew what he was about. Um, he's a good wrestler, you know. He's gonna do really well, and he's hard to score on. And uh, and I know, and I knew that. And so I knew it was gonna be a tight match, and I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna give anything. I was I wasn't gonna give anything up. I was too focused for that, you know. And I knew it was just gonna be a, needed to be a hard seven minutes, and eventually I would get that takedown. I mean, and that's what I went out and, and ended up doing actually. So. Yeah, and it was like a sto- it, like you could almost write a story. You two meeting up. I mean, you knock off the number one seed. He's knocking off Blaze Butler, 
Eblin's out, so you guys meet up. Mm-hmm. He's he's having the Oklahoma State fans come to, the, to their feet every time he wrestles, and he makes yeah. it, I mean, All-American, not a lot of people would have said that. So, I mean, just made for a great matchup. On the other side, you have Evans and Brown, both mm-hmm. Big Ten guys. Um, did you have a preference on who you wanted to wrestle? Because Mike Evans, you guys, did you go to Midlands this year? No, we we went to the scuffle. The, the scuffle. Yeah. So I and and I I know in previous years because as we were talking before, Anthony Zanetta used to beat me up every time at the Midlands. So I know Pitt previously went to the Midlands. So you you haven't seen Mike Evans. Uh, you didn't see him your senior year. I never I never wrestled Mike Evans in my, okay. in my career. Yeah. I, so I, um, we I went to Fargo my summer going to end a senior year and uh he was on the trip with me and i wrestled with him there we worked out with him but other than that i never never wrestled mike evans and but honestly i didn't i didn't have a preference it, i didn't have a preference who i wrestled the whole tournament you know if if the missouri guy wins or if blaze wins or if crutchmore wins you know i i'm bringing the same intensity you know i wrestled the scuffle i actually broke my arm this year and uh, my first match of the season was my first competition of the season was the scuffle. Right. And uh, you know I wrestled I wrestled well there, but everything wasn't clicking. So there wasn't, and I I just really did believe that it did not matter who who was going to come up. You know I was going to have a chance to beat anyone in that bracket. Oh, so you make it to the finals. You beat Crutchmer three to one. Sudden victory. Matt Brown on the other side from Penn State ends up beating Mike Evans. So. You guys wrestle, or you didn't wrestle at the beginning of the season um, when you guys had the tremendous crowd. Se- I think it was 7,500 or something yeah. close to that at Pitt, um, like I said before, on ESPN3. And you received the Randy Stottlemyre Endowment Scholarship. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. But you don't wrestle Matt Brown, and you end up losing to him in the semis at the scuffle. Yes. So you guys had some some history going into the finals at NCAA. So take Mm -hmm. us to the tunnel. You have all the smoke coming out uh, where I I was calling the finals for takedown radio. And I was sitting right next to where you guys were running out and you have all that smoke. You can't see what, what's your, what's going through your mind before you run out. I mean, I mean everything and and nothing, you know, it's like, it's such it's such an emotional experience in every meaning of the word, you know, like I, I'm, I'm like, it's like this terrible stressful feeling yet at the same time, like you're, you're so amped and ready to go. And it's just like, I don't, you know, you really are alive in that moment. And it's, and it's so awesome to be in that moment. I, you know, I'm thankful that I was able to be there. It was, it was awesome. Like, I don't think I'll ever feel something like that again in my life being, being able to, you know, come out on that stage and wrestle. And this is a tough thing to ask. I mean, it's, you know, you just said you were at one of the highest points. And then, you know, it's 5-5 with no time left. Time expires. You guys are going into overtime, as you Mm -hmm. think. Referees, Kale Sanderson comes over, waves the flag. Penn State coach says you locked hands. Mm-hmm. At that point, what did you think? What was running through your mind? Did you know because I if did you know at that point that you might have locked hands? Did you feel it? Mhm. Uh, my hands my hands were absolutely touching. But uh, from my perspective, I I actually thought that uh I whenever they awarded that point, I thought it was awarded to me because I thought Brown got penalized for baiting, and I thought I thought it was just an obvious thing that everyone knew that was happening, because he he actually grabbed my wrists, holding my hands together, and then he dropped to a knee, and my my hands were together, but I you know I released my locks and my hands were touching, but and then there was nothing I could do to you know get them apart because he was holding them together, and I thought you know I just never thought that I was more shocked than anything whenever whenever the match ended that way because I just never thought that something like that would like decide the match you know i just figured that like we all know we all know what happened sure you know and i just thought we were at least going to be going to overtime so it was definitely a a shock 
And the way you handled it, I, I remember saying on air, just class act. You can tell, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to contact you is just to, f- you were on such a big stage, but you, you keeping your composure is so important, especially in those huge moments, whether it's an up or whether it's a down. And f- what you did for these young wrestlers out here is you showed them that sometimes you have to go through adversity and it, you you have to handle it with class, and you did that. So thank you for doing that and showing these young wrestlers that y- y- sometimes it, it doesn't always work in your favor, but um, you did you did right. a great thing there. Yeah, and, and the only thing I have to say to that is uh, it, it helps that I was able to put uh, wrestling in perspective in my life. You know, it's something I, I'm passionate about. Obviously, I put a lot of time into it, something I, something I love. But at the same time, you know, when I think of who I am, it's it's I'm not only defined by a wrestler, you know. I'm defined by what I do daily, you know, and how I, and how I act in situations like that. And for me, it was just kind of like another test. You know, like, how are we, all right, now how are you going to respond? And, you know, I was happy. I was happy to have at least, you know, uh, be able to keep keep my composure like that. And, uh, you know, it was definitely um, definitely at least an experience that's going to, like, change or going to be affecting me the rest of my life, which is kind of cool, you know? Right, yeah. Like I said, great job. Um, before we let you get out of here, what's next for you? You're done wrestling I mean, mm-hmm. you've, is it coaching or do, are you going to look to, I mean, following Tyler Nauman's footsteps, maybe open up a wrestling mm-hmm. school, you follow right. higher education. What's next for you? I'm actually uh, applying to med school here coming soon and, uh, I'll be taking a whole year off. So I don't plan on going until, uh, August, 2016 during that year. I'll probably, uh, be coaching at, okay. Pitt, at, at Pitt actually. I was gonna say, how can they let yeah. you go? Is your brother still coaching there? No, he uh, he coached the year, and then he actually uh, moved down to Charlotte. He's on the pit crew team for Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's in a NASCAR pit crew. He's changing tires. <laughs> that is amazing. Actually, one of my yeah. one of my college teammates, Mike McClure, he was an All American last year at heavyweight. He he's his doing that? he had three opportunities when he graduated college. Went to the practice squad for the Colts to try out for the Colts, the pit crew for Henderson Racing, and oh WWE. Oh, and wow. so he goes to WWE training camp, tears his hamstring off the bone. Oh jeez. Yeah, the first day, but uh, he's he's getting back at it. He's heading to uh, pit crew training here in a couple weeks. Uh, so he's gonna do that. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, I see. Well, thank you very much for being here. Where can our fans, where can your fans follow you on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Yeah, I got I have Instagram and Twitter. My, my username is at TWILPS, T-W-I-L-P-S. All righty. Well, that's been it for episode number 15. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm always telling people, why walk on water when you can dance on it? If you're going to deal with a wrestling apparel company, why not deal with the best? WrestlingAddicts.com. That's WrestlingAddix.com. Not only the best in customer service, but they're, the people that are creating their stuff, they're awesome. Make sure you guys go to their website, check them out, uh, tell them I sent you. Um, that's been it for the Associated Wrestling Press's second caution. I've been Eric Onowski. For Tyler Wilps, thank you very much. Thank you.